Okay. Opening opening phase here. Second Panzer Group gets the go. And again, we, we don't get to move our units on the first phase, but we can perform combat, which means we're going to be attacking units that are adjacent to us. Um, that two-column shift to the right bonus is really um, beneficial for the Germans. The only thing that really hurts the Germans in, in the opening phase is that they don't get to move. And so if you look sort of at how they're positioned, most of these guys are behind the rivers. Uh, and that will cause, uh, when you perform combat, that will cause the unit to, ha to have its uh, combat factor have rounded down when attacking across a river. Whether it has a bridge, like seen right here, that's sort of a bridge, or if it's unbridged, it doesn't matter, it's still going to be halved. So that's really going to hurt us a little bit, uh, losing those combat values when we perform the opening move. But it is what it is, so we're going to go ahead and move forward with it. Now again, we have these Stuka units that we can use to gain us uh, even more beneficial shifts to the right on the CRT, which I think we're going to need, given the fact that we're going to be having the terrain working against us. So clearly we're going to want to, have, we're going to, want to knock these units out as much as possible here. Uh, we, we've got units here in a city, a PVO unit, and this elite infantry division on top. And if we add up their, uh, their combat value, it's going to be five. And they're in a city, so that's going to give them. So they're in Moglev here. And that's going to be important. It's actually a, a victory point on the map. It comes with a VP chit. So we're going to want to capture that for sure. So they've got five in the city. And if we were to attack them, we would be able to attack them with this motorized uh, infantry division here. So that's four. And this panzer division right here, which is going to be nine. So that's going to be 13 to five. 13 to five is a two to one when you round it down. That's not very good. And then the other thing is, well, they're in a city. So our two to one becomes a one and a half to one. Uh, assuming I did the math right, which I think I did, that's not very good. A one and a half to one. And so on a one and a half to one, rolling a one or a two will actually cause the attacker to lose uh, a step. And that's, that's very bad. So one and a half to one, that's sort of our base ratio, but then we have to keep in mind the two column shift to the right for the opening turn for the Germans. So we're on a three to one for that attack, um, which could incur a retreat. Something worth noting here is the PVO unit. It has a movement value of zero. Therefore, if a retreat ever occurs with a PVO unit sort of on the de defense, it's immediately eliminated, which is really nice. Um, but there's a good chance this elite infantry division is going to get away uh, o only on a three to one, assuming that a result even occurs. If we roll a one to two, nothing happens at all. So that's not very good. I really want to knock these guys out of here. I think I'm going to go ahead and use a Stuka unit uh, to, to do that. So that will bump us up to a five to one on the CRT. So I'm going to flip this guy over to the U side. And on a five to one, we should be able to uh, knock these guys out of here. So we're going to roll and we roll a two. So five to one on a two causes a retreat. It's a DR result. So immediately the PVO unit is eliminated from the game. That will never come back. Now this unit here can retreat but it's going to be retreating through enemy zone of control. This third panzer group has zones of, zones of control on these three hexes here, and this infantry division here has zones of, zones of control, pretty much covering the entire retreat path. So if you retreat through enemy zone of control, you have to take a step loss. And so we're going to retreat this guy um, right here. I do believe that is valid. Okay. So according to a retreat rule, we have to retreat toward a friendly supply source. Um, and there are, I didn't show this, but there are uh, friendly su supply sources for the Russians on the map, one down here sort of in the south. That's what this uh, red white circle says. And Russia, of course, or Moscow is a supply source over here in the east. And then there's a supply source down here in Orel uh, in the bottom right hand corner of the map. So given the fact that there is a um, friendly supply source sort of south of this position, I'm thinking that I'm going to retreat this guy right here. And the reason for that is because that puts him behind a river in case he gets attacked again. Uh, the attacker would have to have his, his 
combat value when attacking. So now that we've performed our retreat, we can advance after combat. Mechanized units can advance two hexes. Now, they have the first hex that they enter has to be the hex that uh, they perform combat in, I do believe. So what we're going to do is we're going to move here, and we're going to move... Um, And we're going to move Third Panzer into the city. And then that way we, we capture this VP chit. And I'm going to put it in the victory point or the VP chit box. And, of course, we don't get to look at the number on the back side of this. Okay. So that was our first attack. We used a Stuka. We eliminated a Russian unit and this elite infantry division. Or this elite, uh, yeah, I believe it's a division, loses a step. Okay. So far, so good. Let's do our next attack. We're going to attack the 61st Corps, Russian Infantry Corps here. So we've got SS Reich and we've got the 10th Panzer. We're going to go ahead and activate these guys and see what we can do. So we've got uh, 17 to 3, but we're attacking across the river. So half of 17 is uh, 8 rounded down. So we've got an 8 to 3 result, and that's a 2 to 1. Two column shifts to the right for our first turn. Bonus in combat with the Germans. So we are at a 4 to 1 on this attack, and I really don't want to use all my Stuki units up front. So we're going to keep this at a 4 to 1. We're going to roll, and we roll a 6. Now something worth noting, when you're attacking as, as the attacker, the higher the number that you get, the better the results are going to be. So when we roll something like a 6, uh, that's a good thing for, for, uh, for the phasing player. So we roll a 6 on a uh, 2, 3, 4, 4 to 1. And that is going to be a 1 DR2. So uh, the defender will lose a step, and then the defender retreats two hexes. And we are going to move this guy back two hexes, I guess. I've never really played this game before, so I don't know uh, the best way of, of moving our units around, but we'll, we'll figure that out with time. Okay, now we've got a couple of options up here. We've got this motorized uh, division up here, symbolized by a tank, that I would really like to knock out. But the problem is he's behind a river. And if I were to attack him with my 17th Panzer unit by itself, uh, we're, we're, we're going to have a, about a one-to-one. -one, uh, we're going to have a one-to-one -one odds ratio here, and that's not very good. Even, even with the bonus three-to-one, it's not very good. We'll think about what we want to do there in a second. But here we're going to get better odds. We have 9 plus 7, that's 16 to 3. Um, that's a 5 to 1. Now we are attacking across the river, so i gotta, I got to remember I count for that. So it's going to have our, <laughs> our combat value. So 9 and 7 is 16, that's going to be 8. 8 to 3, that's a 2 to 1. 2 to 1. 4 to 1 on our combat rate. Uh, com combat results table because of our bonus in combat the first turn. We're going to go ahead and roll out a 4 to 1, and we roll a 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, that would be a DR2 for uh, the Russian unit. Now, they get away scot-free. They don't even take a hit. All they have to do is move back two hexes. But what this will allow us to do is we can advance after combat, and we're going to wrap this guy up, this motorized division up here in our zone of control so that if we do, uh, if this unit in, has to retreat, it's going to have to lose a step. And so I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attack here. So if we have our nine, that's going to be four rounded down. This is a one to one ratio plus two columns gives us a two to one uh, column on the combat results table. Now, something to point out here. Why is that? Why is that a two to one? Well, our CRT has a column for a one and a half to one. Uh, on here, so that's kind of interesting. So we're going to be rolling on a two to one, and what we're going to hope for is, well, certainly we don't want to roll a one. That would be bad. Um, but if we can roll a four, five, or a six, we can get this guy to retreat out of here and perhaps take a step loss while doing it. So let's go ahead and roll. Please not a one, and we roll a two. Unfortunately, on a three to one, or I'm sorry, on a two to one, a two result means nothing happens. So oh well, we tried. Okay, could we have used a Stuka unit there? Sure, but it is what it is. All right, down here in the far south, we've got 4th Panzer and we've got 10th Motorized Division. 
we've got a multi we've got a couple of different places that we can choose to attack and i think i want to attack this uh tank unit here so we're at a 15 uh, combat value but we're attacking across a river so that's going to be a seven to three which is a two to one uh, the problem with this is when you're in the woods the defender gets a one shift column to the left so now we're down to one and a half to one on the crt now we add in the two uh two column shift to the right bonus for the germans and that boosts us back up to a three to one um we certainly are in no danger of taking any losses as the German for a three to one on the three to one column, but we could roll potentially roll a result where nothing occurs. I'm being very uh, conservative with my Stuka units. I think I'm just going to go ahead and attack this as is, and we roll a four on a three to one, which is a DR result. So that means that the Russian player has to retreat one hex, and we're going to move him south toward our friendly supply source. And then, of course, we can move our guys across the river. Okay. So that concludes the opening phase for 2nd Panzer Group. We made a couple of gains. We cleared out a city. We caused a couple of retreats. We caused damage here. But clearly, this is sort of off to a rather slow start. Um, because we weren't judiciously using our sticky units all over the place, but they come in a limited number and I don't want to use them all. Okay, following second Panzer Group, we move on to third Panzer Group, and these guys now get to get to move. I'm just trying to reposition this here. Okay, so again, there's not much, uh, we, there's really not much here to think about because while well, we can't move our units in the first, uh, in the first opening phases. So it looks like there's two different combats that, that could happen. 12th Panzer can become engaged and also our stack appear with 19th Panzer in the north. So let's go ahead. We're gonna uh, we're going to attack the 7th Motorized Corps here, uh, this Russian tank unit. And so there are no uh, terrain benefits for the uh, for the Russians in this case, we're attacking at a nine to three, which is a three to one, plus a two column shift to the right. That's going to be a five to one, and we're going to go ahead and roll, and we roll a one, which isn't very good. All we do is we cause the Russian player to retreat one hex. Okay, um, we're going to advance our unit right here, and now the reason for this is because. I want to keep the Russian units wrapped up in my enemy's or in my zone of control. The reason for that is because uh, the rule is in this game, when you're moving your units, if you if you uh, move out of enemy zone of control, it costs you two extra movement points to do it. If you move into enemy zone of control, it will cost you an additional two. Uh, movement points to do it as well. And so by keeping these units wrapped up in my zone of control, they can't just simply run away and expend all of their movement points uh, running away. So that's what we're going to do. Now up here in the north, I'll move the camera so we can see what's going on. Uh, we've got this attack that we could do. We're across the river in this case, which is nice. So we won't lose any combat values associated with that. This unit is in the clear. So we've got a 12 to three, which is a four to one, plus a two column shift to the right on the CRT. And that's going to give us a six to one odds ratio. We roll the die and we roll a three. That's a DR2. So this guy gets away scot-free. He doesn't take any damage whatsoever. And so he's gonna retreat. And now we can advance after combat. And we are going to advance these guys right there. Sure, why not? Again, I really don't know the best way to <laughs> position these units uh, as I've never really played this game before. So we're just gonna hope for the best. Okay, so that was the opening two phases of the game. We can go ahead and resume normal, Sort, sort of normal activations and normal movement. So now we're gonna be able to actually move units on the map. We have to draw from the cup. So now we've reached a point where, where we get to draw from the cup and see what comes up next. So I've shaken this up so it's completely random. Don't know what we're gonna draw and we happen to draw third panzer group. So third panzer group is going to be able to move yet again. 
certainly I'm going to want to tack up here again. We're going to be able to move some of these units around, which is nice. And something to keep in mind, so we're behind this river here. It costs all of your movement points to cross an unbridged river. And that's something to keep in mind when we move these guys around. Now there happens to be a bridge here, and there's a bridge up here. But I can't just simply move these guys across the river if I plan on trying to move them pretty far. I was looking at the situation, and again, I, I, I'm no expert at this game. And I had originally advanced after combat my motorized units into the woods up here. But looking at, uh, sort of thinking ahead about what, what these units are capable of doing, I've decided not to advance them into the woods. I'm going to keep them in the clear. And the reason for that is because it costs um, two movement points for motorized divisions to go through woods, roads, uh, are not considered for, for movement unless you're doing strategic movement, which in this case we're not. So I, I don't think that breaks the game. I'm just going to stick them here for now. And what I want to do is I want to be able to knock out a couple of these units. I want to go after the 51st and the 62nd uh, Russian Corps, infantry corps up here. And I also want to uh, try to knock out these two units down here in the south. At least my goal up here is to open up this area and try to do something down here. I know that sounds very scientific, but we're going to go ahead and move these units and I'll show you how it's done. So clear clear hexes are, are cost uh, one movement point, but we're entering this enemy zone of control. So it's really going to cost us three to move in here. Now, if I want to move to this hex next door, it's going to cost me two to leave the zone of control, two to enter the zone of control, plus an extra one for, um, for the clear hex terrain. So, hmm. That was five plus three, that's eight. So we've expended pretty much all of our movement points there. Um, all right, so we're gonna move both these guys into this hex. We're going to move the 18th motorized division. Um, oh boy, where do we wanna put them? Let's think about this real quick. I wanna wrap these guys up in zone of control. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm going to expend all of my movement points for the 900th Lear Division, and I'm gonna move him across the river. And now I've got this guy wrapped up in zone of control. If he has to retreat or anything like that, he will take a step loss. Maybe I'll just move him across the river as well. Okay, so again, I'm just sort of <laughs> shooting from the hip here. I don't know uh, how this is all gonna work out, but that's okay. So down here in the south, I definitely want to deal with these two units down here. So let's go ahead and move 7th Panzer 1, 2, 3, 4. That wraps up the 69th in, enemy zone, or in my zone of control. We can make this 12th Panzer end up right here. And if we look at this, if I move 12th Panzer right here, it's going to cost me 2 to leave this, this zone of control. It's going to cost me 2 to enter this one. So that's 4. Plus clear terrain, that's 5. And it's going to cost me another five to do the exact same thing again. Leave zone of control, enter zone of control, clear hex. That's going to be another five. So that's going to be ten movement points right there. And then what we can do is we can swing this guy down and lock these guys in enemy zone of control. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what we want to do. We want to surround and eliminate. Um, what do we want to do with these guys here up north? I say we just push them forward. All right, so this is the situation. We're going to perform combat in a couple of different places. Uh, we want to attack 34th, actually, actually, actually. How badly do I want to get rid of the 69th and that 7th motorized division? Well, I can't swing these guys south because, well, I certainly can't swing both of them south because I can't leave my victory point hex open. Um, so I need a blocker up here. I think I will swing 20th Panzer down. So one, two. I think I'll put him right here. By putting him, by putting him here, I will have two Panzer units that will be able to attack this 69th. Uh, infantry Corps, leaving me with this 12th Panzer and 14th Motorized Division to attack the 7th Mechanized. I think that's what we're going to do. So I think let's go ahead and do uh, the combat up here in the north. We've got 9 plus 3 plus 6 plus 4, so that's 19, 22 to 3. 
22 to 3, which is 7 to 1, plus our two column shift to the right uh, on the CRT. So we're at a 9 to 1. I think we ought to win this, and we roll a 1. So on a 9 to 1, that's a 1 DR2. So the defender takes a step loss, so we flip him, and then he has to retreat two hexes. Now, because we have him wrapped up in enemy zone of control, he's going to have to retreat through one of these hexes. He's going to take a step loss doing it. So this Soviet unit gets put in the Soviet reserve box, and he is eliminated. And then we can advance after combat. So I'm going to go ahead and move him two hexes. Again, the first hex has to be uh, the hex that we perform the combat in. And we're going to do the same with these guys. Okay. Continuing our combat, we are going to attack the 69th uh, Infantry Corps. So we've got, uh, we're going to commit the 20th Panzer and the 7th Panzer Group. They're going to come crashing down on these poor guys. So that's 18 to 3, which is a 6 to 1. There is no defensive bonus here because the defender is in the clear. On a 3 to 1, 3 to 1 isn't bad. We're going to get our two column shift to the right, giving us a 5 to 1 on the CRT, and we roll a 4. That results in a DR2. So that the unit has to retreat two hexes towards a friendly supply source. And if we draw him straight back, he's going to be able to only take one step loss and escape. So we're going to move him two hexes. He moves through enemy zone of control, so he flips. And then again, we get to advance after combat. So one, two, one, two. Again, we're keeping these units wrapped up in our uh, zone of control. Now we're going to go ahead and commit the 12th Panzer uh, division and the 14th motorized division and we're going to attack this mechanized unit so 12 to 3 that's a 4 to 1. Uh, we got our two shift call or two shift bonus to the right giving us a 6 to 1 on this particular combat. 6 to 1 we roll a 2. That's a DR2 result so this unit has to retreat two hexes 1, 2. He retreats through enemy zone of control and we flip him. Advancing after combat, we're going to advance our units like so. Do we want to commit 20th? Of course we do. Yeah, we totally want to commit this guy to combat, 20th Motorized Division, because uh, we want to make use of our bonus on the first turn. So we look at this. That's a 2 to 1 odds ratio resulting in a 4 to 1. We roll the die, and we roll a 4. That's a DR2. So this enemy unit gets to retreat two hexes. And we're going to keep 20th Motorized Division right where it is because I don't want this Russian unit to be able to walk down here and take our uh, VP hex. If that were to occur, uh, I'd go over what would happen, but essentially the Soviets would be able to steal one of our VP chits, and I don't want that to happen. Okay, so now we've activated and played out 3rd Panzer Group, um, and we move on to the next phase, which is drawn from our cup, and we're going to draw... 13th army so finally the russian player gets to go and just to remind ourselves 13th army is in fact i don't even remember ah it's right there okay so 13th army down here in the south uh that would be activated the question is do i want them to activate now or not i could trump that with Gadarian's shit and I think I will. I'm going to I'm going to trump that. So this goes back in the cup and I'm going to whip out Gadarian. And what that'll allow me to do is activate second panzer group. So we get to go yet again. And the reason for that is cuz I I want to keep the initiative. Um, I don't want the Russians to be able to run away. They're close by. Let's let's see if we can eliminate some more units. Certainly we're set up here to eliminate the uh, this mechanized uh, division up here and I think we're gonna certainly attack that then we have to think about how we're gonna move second panzer group hmm the problem is the bridge crossings <laughs> oh no um, there's a bridge here we can cross which is great but we've got an enemy unit um, sitting right across from it, so I can't use that. The other bridge that's close by is up here, and there's an enemy unit blocking our way. So, 10th Panzer and SS Reich 
just across the river, they're going to use up all of their movement points and they're not going to be able to do anything. Um, maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. <laughs> I don't know. But let's think about what we can do here. I don't know if trumping that uh, that Russian command ship that was drawn was the best idea. Looking at this, we're not going to be able to do much. Um, certainly, we're going to want to eliminate this guy. And he's surrounded, which is fine. And also this guy up here. And I think I'm going to take the 29th Motorized Division and attack here. But there's really no movement I can take advantage of. These guys are going to cross the river. And that's where they stay. They will not be able to do anything else. Um, I cannot cross the river here because there's enemy zone of control on both sides of this river. Therefore, I cannot cross. So I will be attacking across the river with these two units yet again. Um, let's go ahead and... Uh, perform combat real quick up here since this is sort of a no-brainer we've got nine coming across a river that's four rounded down plus the nine that's on the other side of the river that's 13 to 4 um, 13 to 4 that's a 3 to 1 we got a bonus of two column shifts to the right so that's gonna be a 5 to 1 we roll the die and we make a 5 resulting in a DR2 that's actually not too bad he can only retreat south or to the west. So we're going to retreat him west, two hexes, and he takes a step loss. We're going to go ahead and advance our 17th Panzer, two hexes. And now we've got our 29th Motorized Division attacking the Russian 20th Corps. So 7 to 3, that's a 2 to 1, plus a 2 column shift is a 4 to 1. We roll the die, and we make a phenomenal die roll. That's a 1 DR2 result. So the enemy loses one step and has to retreat two hexes. 1, 2. The question is, will we advance? And I think the answer is yes. We're going to advance right here. Now, down here in the south, we've got some more combat to do. We're attacking across a river. 9 plus 4 is 13 divided by 2 is 6 rounded down. 6 to 2 isn't bad. Uh, that's a 3 to 1, moving up to a 5 to 1 on the CRT for offensive bonus, and we roll a 5. That is a 1 DR2 result, so the enemy must take a step loss, but because he's already reduced, he is eliminated, and our elite infantry division is going to go into a cup. We can advance after combat, so we're going to move two hexes. Again, the first hex that we uh, must advance into is the hex where we performed combat. Okay, now we've still, we still have a couple of units here that we can mess with. So 10th Motorized Division and 4th Panzer Corps um, with a combined CV strength of uh, 15. We are going to certainly attack 20th Mechanized Corps right here. So 15 to 3 is a 5 to 1, plus a 2 column shift to the right gives us a 7 to 1, and we roll, oops, we roll a 3. Okay, 7 to 1, 3, that's a 1 DR2, meaning that the enemy unit takes a step loss and has to retreat two hexes. 1. Two. We're going to retreat him further south. And then, of course, we get to advance after combat, and I think... So that completes the fourth phase of this game. And now we go to the cup yet again. We mix them up, and we draw 20th Army. So the Russian player finally gets to go. And I've already used my trump card, so there's nothing I can do about that. The Russian player will be able to activate this headquarters right here, and any unit within its command range, which is four hexes in this case. 19th Army also gets to be activated because it's within the four range hex of 20th Army head, uh, headquarters. So we need to think about what we're going to do here. 